week. Well, India, a country attacked by Donald Trump as benefiting from the climate agreement, has said it too remains committed to the deal. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the exploitation of nature is a crime. Justin Rowlatt reports. This was expected to be India's energy future when Prime Minister Narendra Modi came to power three years ago. Coal and lots of it. He said economic growth was the priority. The forecast was that India, already the third biggest producer of greenhouse gases in the world, would treble emissions within the next 15 years. But things have changed more quickly than anyone expected. Suddenly, instead of coal being the, the first recourse for powering India, renewable energy becomes the first recourse for powering India. The price of renewable energy has really, really fallen fast. So while renewable energy was about 14 rupees or about 20 US cents per unit of electricity about five years ago, it has now fallen to about two and a half rupees or about three cents per unit of electricity. What that does is it makes, re makes renewable energy cost competitive with coal. Last year, one of the world's biggest solar plants opened here. India needs to massively increase the amount of power it produces. 300 million Indians still have no access to electricity and the average Indian uses a tenth of the power of an American. India's emissions will have to increase, but because of the technological changes and because of the energy efficiency, India's emissions will increase at a slower rate and will probably stop increasing uh, faster and at a lower level than everybody expected they would just a few years ago. It isn't that the Indian government has suddenly been converted to the green cause. This is about economics, not ideology, but arguably that makes it even more significant. Because if doing the right thing is also the most profitable thing, people are far more likely to want to do it. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News, New Delhi. Well, in the last hour, I spoke to our Washington correspondent, Laura Bicker. I asked her if Donald Trump might just be trying to distract from the investigations into his relations with Russia with this massive announcement, or if he's actually trying to please the voters who put him into the White House in the first place. This is a, a, a fulfillment of a promise to those Donald Trump calls the forgotten. Uh, the voters in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in West Virginia, coal workers, oil workers, gas workers, people that he made a vow to during uh, the campaign. So I think this is less about a distraction and more about fulfilling that promise. When we heard from Donald Trump earlier this week and he said he was looking at both sides, and then yesterday when we saw him in the Rose Garden, that was not a nuanced speech. Watching him, I thought it was back to Donald Trump, the campaigner. He was bombastic in his delivery. There was absolutely uh, no, uh, there was no disagreement in his voice whatsoever. It looked as if he had made up his mind that this was what he was going to do. And we, we've heard that, you know, he's lost some very senior members of advisory councils, heads of uh, big businesses who are very influential in the United States, the Democratic governors are saying, look, they're just going to ignore this and carry on sticking to the Paris deal. Well, when you see the numbers of people who have come forward condemning President Trump, uh, internationally and both here in the United States. We've got the likes of the Disney uh, chief executive and Elon uh, Musk, who is uh, head of Tesla, the tech giant. They've both resigned from the Economic Advisory Council in the White House. You have the Democratic governors of the states of New York, of California, of Washington state, who say they will continue to work toward those climate change targets. And that was a target of cutting at least 26% of carbon emissions by 2025. And it's not just those governors. The mayors of 60 U.S. cities have said they'll do the same, including the mayor of Pittsburgh. Remember, that is the city Donald Trump stood on that podium yesterday and said he represents the people of Pittsburgh, not Paris. Well, the mayor of Pittsburgh says he will continue uh, to fight for climate change targets to be fulfilled. However, on the supporting side, you have a number of leading Republicans coming forward, including the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, and the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, who said uh, he praised Donald Trump for dealing yet another blow to the Obama administration's assault 
on energy production and jobs. Laura Bicker there. Just to let you know that in the last uh, few moments we've heard that Nancy Pelosi, um, of course the Democratic uh, leader in the House of Representatives, has also criticised this decision, saying that uh, this is a stunning abdication of American leadership. Walking away from the agreement is extremely dangerous. And she went on to say that Donald Trump lives in a fact-free zone. His speech was based on an incorrect memo. It was false and he simply doesn't know anything about the agreement that he is walking away from a senior Democratic voice that again adding to the condemnation of that decision.